exists until the late 1500s and then finally became formalized in the early 1600s because of the King James Version. Yet it would really be good if people could learn that the name Jesus should not have been used as his name that is given in English. Before born of Mary, God instructed there was a name to be given to his son, that it was to have very specific meaning to it. And it's the same meaning as the one who led the children of Israel out of the wilderness after they'd been there for 40 years and Moses had died. Then Joshua led them on into the promised land. So the name should be the same in English as that individual, Joshua of the Old Testament. If anyone today is asked about what the name Jesus means, they really don't know. But traditional Christianity, they do know that that name is referring to the Christ. That's what they think of when they hear it. And that's because of centuries of teaching that has used that particular name as far as English is concerned. But it's not correct. It's not the correct name. The name of Jesus in English, translations of the Bible, is not accurate. It is not genuine or truthful. It's not a truthful name that was given by translators. When God gives someone a name, it's important to him, and it should be important to us and to all who profess belief in God. You know, God named Adam, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Israel, and others, as well as inspiring the names of many more. However, the name Joshua was to carry the greatest meaning of all in God's plan. So throughout Scripture, it's clear that when God gives a name, that name carries great meaning. Most often, the name reveals some aspect of God's plan and purpose for mankind. Joshua is the name that English translators should have used. And the reason why they did not or will not, is steeped in religious corruption and lies that began to work their way into what has become traditional Christianity. Shalom, Kahala Yahweh, Bashem Yamshai, Bashem Kwakwadash, Dove honors my teachers, the apostles, and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, who the house of David reborn again in this generation. And show the warm to the 130 Asherala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing their true heritage were known as, and still are, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about what they won't tell you about the name Jesus Christ. In the video you just seen, that man was explaining what the proper English name or translated name would be for the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? That his name should have been Joshua. Now, that being said, that's an English name, okay? That is not the name of the Messiah himself. Because again, the name of the Messiah is a Hebrew name. Let's read this. This is Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the winds in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Now, why is this in here? Right? A lot of people very naively say that the name of the Messiah is Jesus Christ because it's right there in the Bible. That's what's written in the Bible. Well, that's true on the face of that argument, but it's a very naive argument. Right? It's it's uh, you have to be very simple and uh, and not understanding the the. the truth of, of 
the Bible and also just what the Bible is speaking about, right? This scripture in particular because it makes it very clear that the name of the Messiah, which is ultimately the key to seek to or to get salvation, right, is a mystery. And it's not a mystery because the Lord, you know, he's, he likes playing games. No, he has put uh, a test. He has put a barrier for entry into the area where you can actually, you know, know the name of his son, right? The Lord does not want the world to know the name of his son. And why is that? Well, because it has meaning. It has power behind it. And this is why he's allowed the whole world to believe the name is, you know, so-called Jesus Christ. Let's go and take a look at the Bible timeline. And let's just take a look at some things that off the bat will show you that the letter, you know, the name Jesus along with the letter J just weren't in the, uh, you know, the Bible. Now, first of all, let's go and take a look around the time when the English language was created, right? The language that is spoken here in America, or what is biblically known as Babylon the Great, was created around 1350 AD, okay? It tells you here, it says, today's English was born when the West Germanic Old English went through the Great Valve Shift, okay? That's the historic period or the historic event that's referred to as creating the English language that we know today. Now, again, the English of this time is very different, right? That's, you know, you're going to be getting the whole vowels and, and, and uh, ye and all those type of words. And, a lot, and it's even a little bit crazier, right? But again, that just shows you, you know, first of all, that the language English is, is not an old language. Next, when you go forward in history, as the apostles have brought out, and as we have mentioned, the letter J didn't come into existence until about 1524, right? By a man named Gian Giorgio Tresino, right? An Italian Renaissance Germanian known as the father of the letter J made a clear distinction between the I and the J, right? That's a picture of it. This man here, is the man who created the letter J to be used in, in font sets. Okay, Up until this time, you had the letter I, for the most part, being used interchangeably with the letter uh, or the sounding of you know, J's, right? Ha, Ja, and so forth. Okay? This is why when you read the 1611 Bible, you actually have uh, the no J's in it. There's only uh, eyes, right? If you look in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the name Jesus in the 1611 King James Version Bible, it's going to say Iesus, right? I-E-S-U-S, -S, right? And that's because the letter J, even though it was invented in 1524, it hadn't picked up universal adoption until after the 1611 Bible was created, okay? So that's the other issue. Next, let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So, for example, here goes the uh, 1611. Right. The King James Bible was written. And then the next thing is Jesus. Right. The, the name Jesus was basically created and solidified in the historic documents uh, around 1632 A.D. It tells you it says, first time the name Jesus was spelled precisely in this way in a secular sense was first noted June of 1632 within the English legal brief prepared from the court of the High Commission in London, England. So you see, the names of the Messiah have gone through many iterations, right? Like I said, uh, in, you know, the, you know, Aesus is what is in the 1611 Bible, but after that, when the letter J had become more universally adopted, the letter J was used instead of the I. Right? And like I said again, or I, like I read, 
1632 is when the name Jesus was actually in a legal document as being the name of Messiah, right? Prepared for the courts of, of London, okay? And that there kind of pretty much solidified the name. Now, that being said, this is just some of the things that the Lord did to hide his name, right? There's a scripture in, in the Bible that shows you that the Lord hides himself from the majority of the people in the world. And that can be found in Isaiah 45 and 15, right? It says, Barely thou art a power that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. You see, the Lord does not want everybody to know his name. He only wants those who are worthy worthy enough to understand that there have been events in history to try to hide and bury the name of the Messiah. As the man in the video that I played in the beginning of this lesson said, it's you know been done through for many reasons, but namely through religious corruption. Right? And ultimately, you know, when you when you follow it all back, it's because it, it's the will of the Lord, right? The Lord sets everything up man and again this is why the lord does not want everything to be given right now here's the truth right the name of the messiah the one who people ignorantly calls jesus christ his true name is what you see here in front of you right you can look this up in the uh, blue letter bible in the in the uh interlinear right under h3091 Okay. The name you're going to see there in the modern Hebrew is going to look like this, and in the Paleo Hebrew or ancient Hebrew is going to look like this. Right? This is the language that was on the scene when Moses, basically all the Old Testament, you know, for the most part was around. Right? By coming about the time uh, when the Greeks were around and, and the uh, Babylonian captivity, even before that, you had the modern, what's known as the Assyrian Hebrew created, and that's why modern Hebrew looks like this today. Well, these letters, the way you pronounce them, first you go from right to left, and the way that you pronounce this is Yahawashai. Yahawashai. And that means in Hebrew, the name of our Messiah. The son of Yahweh, right, which is the true Hebrew name for the Father. Well, Yahweh Shai, it means He is salvation, right, or He delivers, right. So this is the true name of Jesus Christ, which they will not tell you, right. Now, the reason why you actually, uh, why Yahweh Shai is actually translated to Joshua. Is you got to actually go to um, Acts for this, right? Or, well, this is probably the easiest place to, to to solidify that the name Jesus and Joshua are interchangeable, right? And uh, this is Acts seven and forty-five. Uh, it says, "Which also are fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession." of the Gentiles whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, right? Now you have to, now here's another, you know, level of, of knowledge that you have to possess before you understand this, right? If you read this at face value, it makes no sense, right? When did so-called Jesus Christ drive out? You know, or, or uh, you know, basically take over a land, right? In the days of David. Well, well, he didn't, right? The person who did that was Joshua. Joshua was one of the leaders of Israel after you know the death of Moses, who led Israel into the land of Canaan and helped to conquer the land from the Canaanites. Okay, up until the you know the time of David, where you know where we were open possession that land right taking it over right so that being said you have to now understand that this is a 
it is a, a, a typo, right? It's a translating error. Right there, it should have said Joshua, right? But again, this is just one of those little hints that the Lord has put in the Bible for those who are diligent and willing to study and, and learn his name because they, inside of them resides the love for the Father, right? The love for this truth, right? People who are just, you know, worshiping the Lord at face value, doing it because it, it's what they believe seems good, or they, you know, they're just playing the part of a good, good Christian, good Catholic, right? They won't go this far in. This, this is too, too uh, deep for them. It takes too much time, and it's nonsense for them, right? They don't, they don't see the importance of it. But for you who are watching these videos, who want to know this, this is why, um, this is where this has led you, right, to the Blue Letter Bible. So we can actually take a look to see what Hebrew letters, or in this case, what Greek letters, are there for the name of Jesus. So let's go down, right? And let's look right there to see what it says for Jesus. Well, check this out, right? 24, G, G2424. Strong G2424. Jesus. Jesus. There you go, right? Now, it tells you here, right, you know, Jesus, Jehovah of Salvation, right, which is just a bunch of different translations. But this is obviously the name of the Messiah, right, as as uh, they, they tell you in this modern day world. But check this out too, letter C. Joshua was the famous captain of the Israelites, Moses' successor, right? So check that out. So this, he has the same name as Joshua. Now, when you go into the root word, which means if you go to the word, that this Greek goes back to, it tells you right here. Look, check this out. That's pretty much Yahweh Shai, right? But let's read this, or it Joshua, as it says, right? So, check this out. This is why a lot of people, when they say today, and they think they're deep and they think they know it, they'll go like, oh, his name is, you know, the true name of uh, Jesus Christ is Yahushua, right? Or Yahuwah, right? This is because they're getting this. They're basically saying Joshua in Hebrew. Right? But you got to understand that this is not how you, uh, the, you, this is not the proper pronunciation of the Lord's name, right? See how it says variant spellings? Here is, uh, is, is uh, what you want to take a look at, right? But before we do get into this, let's take a look at the definition. It says Joshua or Jehoshua means Jehovah is salvation. Now this is false, right? Because it should say Yahweh. Yahweh is salvation, right? So, or He is salvation, right? But see, this is the these are the wills of the devil. This is what Satan has put into place by the commandment of the Lord to trip up people, right? But this is this is why the apostles say that you have to understand Hebrew, right? It's not a necessity, right? But if you don't understand Hebrew, and you gotta have faith that those who are you're following are leading you right. But if, again, if you take it upon yourself to, you know, to make make sure this is the truth, then you're gonna learn a bit of Hebrew, and you're gonna learn, you know, what these words actually say, right? So in this case here, these very, you know, variant spellings. What do we have here? Check that out. Let's let's uh, let me take this image here. Right? What's this? Hold on. Look at this. And look at this. Would you check that out? Crazy, right? That's the name of the Lord. Yah Ha Wa Shai. Right? And if you say go over here, this is Yahawa. And that's and that's Yahweh Sha'ai, right? Kind of like an extra A, right? But see, the thing is, you don't say, um, you don't say Wa again, right? So it's like, it's Yahweh Shai Wa. So that's not how you pronounce it. It's pronounced like this, Yahweh Shai. And see, these are, is, is the truth behind the name of Jesus Christ, right? This is how you find the name of the Messiah. And why is it so important that you have the proper understanding and the proper pronunciation for the Messiah? Well, 
Let's see, what does it say here in Acts 4 and 12? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Right? So that right there makes it very plain that there is only one name, right? There's only one secret word to get into the club, right? The club of salvation, right? And that name is what I just read to you, Yahweh Shai, right? But that's not the only name, right? Because again, you got to understand that though we worship Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, we ultimately give ultimate worship and ultimate praise to his father, right? But because us Israelites, us Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, we are currently in captivity and we are in what you would call a fallen state, we cannot go directly to the Lord. The Lord hasn't welcomed us back completely yet, right? We have to go through his son to deal with him, right? This is Ezekiel 9 and 4. And Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right? So you see here the Lord, the Father, right? The Heavenly Father is commanding the angels to go through the people, all the people of Jerusalem, not the not the physical place on earth, but the people, right? The Negro Latinos and the Native Americans, because you gotta remember, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Okay, the Lord made the people, and then they put He put them in their place. Okay, the place, and and that's why we are Jerusalem. Wherever we are, that's where Jerusalem is. Okay, so He's telling the angels here to go through the through the Israelites, right, and put a mark upon their foreheads. Now, what is that mark? This mark is a what's known as a mark of exemption, right? It's the law. Now, that right there, ultimately is having the knowledge of the Lord's name, right? To have that, that understanding of how you actually call upon the Lord, right? And, and there's a particular way that you call upon the Lord, right? And, and, uh, and the reason why you need to call on his name in a particular way is because you have to, like I said again, you have to jump through all these hurdles, all these tests that the Lord has put in front of you, right? Which a lot of people, are going to get you know lost in it because they're going to think it's, it's either unimportant. They're going to think you know vain thoughts like, "Oh, the Lord wouldn't destroy somebody for not knowing you know getting the pronunciation wrong." Or, no, the Lord will, right? Because He is very precise, right? The Lord wants no variances. He doesn't want. He wants one particular way, right? Like the Lord isn't going to let you slide. Right? So he wants one particular thing to be done, and that is to, to have you study and to know him, like it tells you here. This is Psalms 91 and 14. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. Right? So all those people out there calling upon Ahia, Jehovah, Yahuwah, uh, I am right. Uh, all these different names, right? Y H W H. All these things, they haven't gone into the depths of the knowledge that the Bible has given us, right? They have only scratched the surface of, of the truth, right? And they and once they've gotten to 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 one level, then they, then these people they they basically said, oh, that's it, and they they've stuck to it, man. And those are the people that the Lord does not want. He wants. The people that, like he says here, man, that they have set his love upon me. Now, that love translates ultimately to you seeking the Lord, doing the hard work, doing the research. And why is that? Because you want to ultimately be found to be that good servant, right? This is why here at Great Millstone, we're making these videos, we're making, doing this work, right? Because we're trying to make our, our calling and election sure, right? We want to show the Lord that we are doing this work, that we have been searching for him when he comes back, right? And this should be your same mindset to do this work, to turn up, right? Because after all, in 2022, 
is the year of Yahweh Bashim Yashai turning up. Right? And and if you have not found, you know, the, the understanding of why you need to call upon the name in a certain way, then you need to get that right, right? You need to turn up yourself and actually call upon the Lord in, in a particular way. And this is how you do it, right? You say Yahweh, which is the name of the Father, right? Which is Hebrew for He is. Baha Shem, which is in the Sham or Shem means name. Yahweh Shai, which is again the Messiah's name that we just went through. Um, and then you would say, you know, after that, um, usually you would say Baha Shem Rakhok Pradash, right? Rakhok Pradash is spirit holy, right? So you would say Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Pradash, and then whatever you'd like, right? Barakatha, which bless you, or, you know, uh, you know, you could pray to him or ask him anything, you know, use, but you call upon in that fashion, right? Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Yahushai, okay? That's how you call upon the name of the Lord. That's the truth that they do not want to tell you about the name of Jesus Christ. So, hopefully this video was edifying. I'll come to our next time. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Yahushai, double honors my teacher, the apostles and elders, the great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.